Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into how we can connect to DynamoDB from an application which is running inside EC2. So we will simply deploy our Spring Boot application to EC2 and we will see how we can connect to DynamoDB tables from there. So in the last video, we have already seen how to connect to DynamoDB table from application running inside local. So we have created a Spring Boot application and connected it to DynamoDB table and, and performed CRUD operations. In this video, we are going to do same stuff from EC2. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be another fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So Spring Boot plus DynamoDB plus EC2. So we will connect our Spring Boot application to DynamoDB from EC2 instance. And this is again similar to what we have seen in the S3. So in the last video, we have seen how to connect our Spring Boot to DynamoDB from our local application. That means Spring Boot application running inside our local. So if you have not seen that yet, I will recommend you go ahead and check it out. This video will be just extension of that particular video. If I go back to canvas, then this is how we are able to connect to DynamoDB by using DynamoDB client. But this is from our local application, right? But now when we put our application inside EC2, when we run our Spring Boot application inside EC2, do we really need any user? We don't really need any user, right? So when we see S3, we did not really create any user. Instead, what we did, we created a IAM role. We provided S3 access to that particular IAM role and we have attached that role to EC2 instance and we deployed our Spring Boot application to instance and it was able to connect to S3 just fine. Now in the same fashion what we are going to do, we are going to create another access like DynamoDB access. So in the same fashion we will attach DynamoDB access to this particular same role and we will attach this role to EC2 instance. And now it will be able to connect to our DynamoDB from our EC2 instance, right? So should be able to connect to DynamoDB by using this particular role as we have seen in the S3 as well. So we have already seen this in the S3. Now similar stuff, we will look for DynamoDB as well. So what we can do first, let me just quickly create a EC2 instance. So I will go over here. I will go to EC2 dashboard and let me say launch instance. So here in the name, I will just say DynamoDB demo. So here I will keep the OS as Linux only. I will keep the same configuration. I will say T2 micro. Here I can just create a new key pair for Dynamo app, right? So Dynamo for Dynamo app, I will just create this particular key pair in PEM format so that we will be able to log into our application. After that, what do we have? We have a network setting inside that perhaps we can select the existing security group. We have many basically. After that, we will say, after that we will keep other configuration as same and we will just say launch instance. So if you see over here, it is basically creating an instance for us and it's already running. Now here our EC2 instance is basically running. But if I scroll down and if you see IAM role, basically there is no role. This particular role, so here we were talking about a role, right? So IAM role, we need to assign to this particular EC2 instance, which is already running for us. Now, how we can do that? First, we need to create a role. So what I'll do, I'll go to IAM, I'll go to roles. There we go, let it load. So we have all these roles already present. So if you see over here, this EC2 S3 role is something which we have already created in the S3 video. And if you see, we have this S3 full access over here. So this much part is basically present. Now what we need, we need to add a DynamoDB access as well. So what we can do, we can give the access to same role. So I will say attach policies. And here I will search DynamoDB policy and I will give DynamoDB full access. And I'll say add permissions. So now there should be one more policy added for DynamoDB. And this particular role, now we can attach to our EC2. If I go back over here, I will go to actions, I'll go to security, I'll say modify IAM role. And here I'll choose IAM role, which is our, this one, right? EC2 S3 role. And I'll say update IAM role. So now the role of this particular DynamoDB EC2 instance will be updated to this particular role that we have created, right? So all fine now. Now what I can do, what we need to do, we need to run our Spring Boot application on EC2. 
So what I can do, let's go to our Spring Boot application. Let me bring that up. So this is basically the Spring Boot application we have seen in the last video where we have created this DynamoDB config. And this one we have created for local and the other one, the dev profile we have created for which one? EC2 instance, right? Now, if you see over here, we are not providing any client ID or secret ID, right? We are just going with default credentials provider as we have seen in the S3 as well, right? So S3, we have also used the default one. Nothing much, right? So same stuff, just we are going to use the default credentials and we are not going to use any this access key or secret key, right? No access key, no secret key, only default one because EC2 will be able to connect to DynamoDB by using a IAM role. Now in the dev properties, you will see that we only have a region and we have a bucket name. But from that, we don't have anything else. And all other code, this basically this controller, this service layer, this repository layer, this product entity, is something which we have already seen in the last video on how actually that works. Now what we can do, we can just create the jar file of this particular application. And how we can do that? We can do that by using a simple maven command. Let me pull up some commands over here. So this is basically the command for creating a maven package. So if you see over here, I'm giving maven clean package and here I'm giving profile as dev, right? So now I will enter. and build is success now if you see our application this particular jar should be created so what i will do i'll just copy this and i will put it in a folder so now if you see over here in this particular folder i have kept this particular pem file that we have downloaded and this particular jar that we have just created now what we need to do we need to move this jar to where our ec2 instance so what i will do i'll just open up my terminal let me maximize it let me just zoom it a bit so that it's clearly visible that this much is fine i guess now i will go to downloads and i will go to dynamo db right so this is basically the folder if i say ls we will have this dynamo db pem file and we will have this jar now what we can do let me just find the command so we had the command to transfer the file to ec2 instance right so this is basically the command scp our key file what is the name of our key file in this case dynamo app tem so i'll just copy this paste it over here after that what do we have we have the name of our jar and it should be similar jar because we are making changes in our s3 demo application itself after that we have the url of our ec2 instance so what i will do i'll go to our ec2 instance and i will copy the url so this is basically the url of our EC2 instance and I'll go back and I'll paste it over here and that should be it so let's try to hit this command I'll say yes and it says unprotected private key file so we need to change the permission of key file first so here is the command to do that I'll go back to where I'll go back to terminal I'll do that first. This will change the permission of our key file. And now I will again try to send. And now if you see it has started and it is completed already. So if you see over here, 38 MB is transferred, right? That's fine. Now what we can do, we can connect to our EC2 instance by using SSH. I can go back over here. I will say this command and we are in our EC2 instance. Now what I will do, I will go to, I'll go to CD home, I'll go to EC2 user, here if I say ls, we will see that our jar is present over here, no problem, right? Again, if you remember, we have seen this particular document where uh, we have all the commands to do that. And first we need to check if the Java version is present, right? Because we need to run a Java application, we will go back and we will quickly check that. So Java is not found. We need to install that basically and we have a command to do that as well so what we need to do we need to do yum update first so i'll say sudo yum update y it will do its job so it is basically complete after that i will just install java 17 so it is installing it for us there we go so it is installed now and if and now if i say java version we are getting the java 17 version 
now what we need to do we need to run our application by using no hub command so i'll just copy the command over here i will put it over here and let's look at it first iphone jar and what is the name of our jar this is basically the name of our jar i'll put it over here and let's try to run it let's go back over here and here i will paste it and let's try to start it so it gave us a java process right now what i can do i can just say ls and here we will see output.log right so i can just say cat output.log let's see what happens it says no active profile set falling back to a default profile so we need to provide a profile right because if we do not provide profile how it is going to bring up the application so what we need to do let me just clear and let's try to run the command with our profile as well so i'll go back over here and here after this we will just put our active profile so here i will just say hyphen hyphen profiles active dev right and now let's try to bring it up i'll go back over there and let's just paste it and let's try to run it now let me say ls let me try to cat output again let's see this time what is happening now if you see one active profile dev right and let's try to cat it again so it says started our application right so our application is just started fine now our application is running on ec2 now let's try to copy the public endpoint of ec2 and let's try to perform few operations if i go back over here we have this particular public dns now let's go back to our postman let me bring it up there we go and here what i will do i will just try to put this particular url of our ec2 instance so this is basically our public dns and after that this is a http i'm adding i'm adding the port that is the default port of our spring boot application and i'll say products and they should just add the product for us before that if i go to dynamo db and if i go to explore items here we have a product table created already right in the last video we have already seen this particular product table and here if you see we don't have any data present inside this particular table so let's try to hit this particular endpoint now if you see we are getting 200 okay now if i go back over here then you will see one entry is basically added for us this particular entry that we have just sent so it is basically working from our ec2 instance let's try to add one more probably let's try to add this macbook pro and let me send it and now if i refresh this you will see a second entry is basically added where we have this particular data which we have just sent right macbook pro so the thing is it is just working fine now if i hit the get api it should return us all the products there we go so both the products are being returned to us right so again it started working just fine from ec2 instance as well and now in this case we are running it on dev environment and not on local environment so we don't really need any user so that is how you can simply connect to dynamodb from application running inside ec2 by using iam rule let's go back over here so we have successfully seen how we can do that so this is basically something which we have already seen in s3 this is just a recap of that this is just a quick video that i have created to highlight that it's not only about s3 we can connect to any other application like dynamodb by using ec2 by using iam rule right that is basically the DynamoDB. So we have seen two types of databases, RDS and DynamoDB. And we have also seen how we can connect to the respective database from your Spring Boot application. So that is basically it for this particular video. After you are done with this, don't forget to go ahead and kill your EC2 instance. So what I will do, I will just say delete or terminate the instance. So I will just terminate the instance. So it is basically shutting down and it will be deleted in some time, right? For that we can also go ahead and delete this DynamoDB table. So what I can do, I can go to DynamoDB here inside tables. Here I can go to tables. I can say actions or not in actions. There is a delete button itself. I can type confirm over here or I can copy paste that one as well. And I'll say delete. It will just be deleting our DynamoDB table as well. So that it, we don't get any unnecessary cost. So let me try to refresh this if you see we don't have any running instance anymore if i kill this you will see this guy is terminated so that is basically it for this particular video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet your little effort of subscribing 
will give me more enthusiasm to create more and more such videos share this video with your friends so that they are also aware how to deploy your spring boot application on ec2 and connect to dynamo db that's it for this video see you in the next video